Hello, greetings guys. Welcome to Cal Preaching. Um, okay, we got a lot to cover today, so I am just going to get right into it. Um, except that hair is going to make me bananas. Um, so, uh, <laughs> hi guys. Gosh, I feel like it's been a while. It's been a minute, hasn't it? Um, I've been thinking about um, the Old Testament, okay? And what I've been thinking about is that I'm kind of upset that I don't know more about the Old Testament. I'm kind of much more comfortable talking about New Testament stuff, but when you start getting into numbers and um, Deuteronomy and Kings and, you know, um, I, I like I know the names, you know, Genesis, um, you, you know, uh, Exodus, like I know the names. And I know a lot of the stories, but I am not as comfortable talking about the Old Testament because it's like, an, it's a little bit more intimidating because I naturally gravitate to the New Testament because Jesus is in the New Testament and um, it's just so exciting and it doesn't sound as like ancient and it doesn't sound as wrathy, you know, there's just so much wrath of God in the Old Testament that scary you know there's a lot of blood a lot of guts a lot of um um sacrifice you know sac animal sacrifices and all that stuff and i understand you know i get it like those poor little animals needed to be sacrificed in order to um make an atonement right for um people's sin and you know i know like a little bit about the tabernacle and a little bit about the ark of the covenant and i know a little bit about Exodus and I know a little bit about Moses's life and I know a little bit about um, you know things like I I have a rough understanding not a broad understanding of the Old Testament and that makes me feel insecure as a Christian because I want to be able to you know be able to dish it out if somebody asks me a question about the Old Testament I want to be able to say oh well yes you know and this happened in numbers and this happened in you know i want to be able to be able to feel comfortable having a conversation with somebody about it but i definitely shy away from the old testament and it makes me feel a little bit like i always tell you i feel like a counterfeit christian i always do i feel like a counterfeit christian sometimes and you know, I always um, have to remind myself that Satan's a punk and that that's, of course, his job is to make me feel like I'm not a real Christian. And um, and he hates that I started this channel so that I could actually talk about this stuff openly with you guys and, t and like reveal to you some of the things that I feel like I struggle with as a Christian because I want to be able to, um, A, be honest about it and B, help other people understand that they're not alone if they feel some of those feelings too or you know they're, they're not as well versed in certain areas as a christian whether it be the bible or a prayer or um you know uh or uh reading scripture um which is kind of like the bible but you know what i mean whatever it is um satan certainly doesn't want me to have a channel where people can talk openly about their walk with jesus and um their struggles and their victories and all of that so but I I have been praying for God you know to connect the dots for me and to help me um, understand Old Testament better and um, to have a desire in my heart to read it and I just want to put it out there so that I'm accountable that I'm gonna start praying for the willingness to read the Old Testament more because um, my flesh is just, doesn't wanna do it. Like my flesh is just not repelled by the Old Testament, but my flesh just says, oh, it's too heavy and it's, you know, it's too weighty and it's too dark and it's not gonna feed you. Um, but I love when people quote Old Testament scripture or when they, um, are able to, you know, cross pollinate Old Testament with New Testament and to be able to cross reference and, 
you know, um, and to be able to, like, I remember having a big epiphany when I, cause I, I thought to myself, Abraham, like he asked him, God asked him to sacrifice his own son. Like what kind of a God would ever do that? And then, um, you know, somebody taught me that that was the foreshadowing of Jesus and his crucifixion and, you know, his God sending his son to die on the cross and, um, that, and obviously Abraham never did have to kill Isaac, but, um, um, it was very cool when I was able to, um, make that, um, mental note, like, wow, that's so interesting that it really was a foreshadowing of Jesus's crucifixion. So, um, yeah, I, I had a day today where I was just, I had a pretty good day. It's just that I'm not, I'm, when I have these moments, um, where I start to feel a little bit of anxiety, I have been just calling on my father. I've just been saying, father, 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 creator, 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 creator. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you for giving me life. Thank you for giving me life. And, um, and it's really been kind of, um, dynamic for me to do that because, um, normally I would just ruminate and I would just allow myself to, um, you know, luxuriously fall into my, um, anxiety and into my, um, my fears and, you know, my stresses and whatever I wanted to worry about for the day, I would just go there. But today I tried something new and it felt really good to just immediately nip it in the butt and just like, is it nip it in the bud or nip it in the butt? <laughs> Could somebody let me know? I think it's bud, nip it in the bud, but, um, yeah. Um, and just go in there and crucify it immediately with worship and praise, you know, praise is huge. And, um, I don't want to withhold my praise from the Lord, but I find that I do. I'm, I'm one of those withholders. Like I just somehow withhold praise and, um, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely, um, the enemy just, you know, trying to keep me from, um, doing what is actually the most natural for us as human beings is to, is to worship. I think when we get to heaven, that's going to be a, be a very big part of <laughs> our daily routine. Um, but no, when I say that, I'm like, oh gosh, you know, is that really what heaven's going to be like? Just sitting there worshiping God all day long. You know, we can't, even wrap our heads around how glorious and how um, the ecstasy that we're going to feel when we're in heaven. I always say that if it's like sitting on a cloud and plucking a harp, like, no thanks. Um, but I took a little note here that I wanted to, I posted on Instagram that, you know, Satan's put you on, on his agenda today. So I hope you've put Jesus on your agenda today. Um, and it's so true. It's like, we just have to remember that, you know, he really literally puts you on your agenda, on his agenda every day and puts me on his agenda every single day to try and slay us and try and confuse us and try and make us angry and get a rise out of us. And, um, you know, today for me, he just really tried to, um, he really tried to keep me from doing this video. He really tried to keep me from, um, from praising and worshiping my King. Uh, he really tried to keep me from, um, from praying in tongues, uh, which, uh, I also commented on, um, on the last video that I did, I pinned a comment, um, that this woman, Tara, I think her name was T Tanya, Tanya wrote a comment, um, and she had a really bad experience in church when she was growing up in, uh, I think it was a Baptist church, I think. But anyway, um, they like had everyone line up in, in front, you know, of, um, the church, all these kids and had them, um, all like they, the, the older people prayed over them and, and asked for the gift of tongues to be, uh, placed over these children and they told them to like move their tongues around inside their mouth and that they would start praying in tongues. Anyways, long story short, it was a very traumatic experience for her. 
and she commented to me and said that um, you know it's actually uh, not um, a gift for everybody and and so I called my sister-in-law who's like super on fire for Jesus and I asked her like is this true because I was always told that you know it's 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 a gift for everybody for every believer and she was like actually it's not a gift for every single believer and you know we are all supposed to pray for the gifts of the spirit um we're to receive them we're all supposed to be you know very committed to praying for the gifts which i don't think i mean if i were to sit down and try and tell you every single gift i know prophecy um praying in tongues faith is actually a gift did you know that? Did you know that faith is actually one of the gifts of the Spirit? No wonder. It's like sometimes faith is hard. And it's interesting that it's one of the gifts uh, of the Spirit. I'm going to start praying for that one because even though I feel like I have faith, I know that I have so far to go. And I know that I could be practicing and um I could be uh, I could be trusting in Jesus Christ um, on a much much more profound much deeper level than I allow myself to um, so anyway I wrote a comment after Tanya uh, sent that and after I called my sister-in-law and I corrected myself because you know I I like I always say to you guys, I'm not a preacher and I just do my best to share my walk with you. And that's what I had always been taught. But isn't that interesting that we, you know, we really have to be careful about the things we've been taught. We need to double check our sources and uh, what we've been told because, you know, the Bible says that people will present themselves. Um, there'll be wolves in sheep's clothing and tell you things that aren't necessarily biblical and so we have to be on guard for that so i wrote a comment back thanking her for that and for um you know really opening my eyes and helping me see that um it actually paul actually says that the gift of tongues is not for everybody so it's not for everybody but it doesn't mean you shouldn't pray for it uh because um it is a very helpful tool for me in my walk with God. Sorry, I keep doing that. I'm using an iPad today because my phone was acting wonky. So I'm trying to figure this out. Um, so um, the other thing is, um, yeah, I just, you know, <sighs> so I don't want to make this all about, you know, what people commented and stuff, but I, I do want to say that, um, you know, a lot of people are just telling me uh, to stay in my lane and to not worry about other people's journeys with God. And um, I don't know, for me, I just feel like part of being a Christian, an important part of being a Christian is sharing our faith with other people. And, you know, it's scary and it takes boldness um, and it takes a gentleness. And, um, you know, a lot of people commented that my... Uh, that my video with my mom was a little harsh and I told you guys I felt like a little ashamed and like oh I should have gone a little softer on her and I should have uh, I don't know approached it with a more, a more loving approach but I get frustrated you know like if I say well do you think Jesus is God she's like well no you know I mean he was a prophet <laughs> you know or if I say uh you know do you believe he rose from the dead mm, not necessarily you know <laughs> So it's just like, ah, oh, I just, I guess I'm getting to a place where I'm starting to feel more urgent about, you know, giving the message, the good news to my loved ones. Because if I'm not going to give it to my loved ones, then who am I going to give it to? You know what I mean? It's like, if you really believe the Bible, then you're going to believe that your soul lives on wherever you end up you're gonna you know your soul is gonna live on and yeah I'm talking about heaven and hell and I've had a hard time wrapping my head around that for a long time I don't want to believe there's a hell um you know because I feel like that's a little harsh like hell really hell um but you know nobody spoke of hell more than Jesus Christ himself so it's important that I 
believe my Bible. You know, remember when I said it's good to believe in God, but it's even more important to believe God. So I'm trying to believe God. And um, if I'm truly believing God, then um, guys, there's no time to waste. We have to spread the good news to the people we love and to even strangers on the street. You know, um, because even the scholar or the homeless man, they're both going to receive the gospel in the same way by hearing. And the gospel says people will receive the word of God and will be saved by hearing. So we have got to share the gospel with those that we love and those that we don't even know. Everybody, you know, a soul is a soul. And um, a soul is precious. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people comment that they don't love Ray Comfort, but sometimes I watch his videos and I love when he says, would you sell one of your eyes for a million dollars? And somebody says, no. Would you sell both of your eyes for a billion dollars? And somebody goes, no, I wouldn't, you know? And he says, well, then imagine how precious the human soul is. Imagine if you wouldn't sell both of your eyes for a billion dollars. Imagine how precious your very own soul is, you know, um, and how precious it, precious it is to God. He created our souls. It's just so mind blowing, really. So back to my holy notes, the creator of creation That's deep. The creator of creation loves your soul. Loves your soul. Loves your soul. Created your soul. My soul. So that takes some time to just meditate on that, on that your father in heaven created your soul. I don't care who you are, Becky, Jenny, Johnny, Lisa, Gilbert, <laughs> you know, created your soul. Wow. A soul. Who can create a soul? Who can do that? Only God. Only the creation, the creator's creator, creation's creator. It's the only person that can do that, create a soul. Um, so, um, yeah, I just... I just noticed that I'm so easily hijacked um, on my, uh, you know, on my mission to love and serve God on a daily basis. I just get hijacked. I get hijacked by my kids. I get hijacked by being hungry. I get hijacked by, oh, I gotta get gas in the car. Or I get hijacked by, you know, um, I don't know, my husband wanting a little whoopee. Like, I. <laughs> so many factors there are so many ways to get hijacked from our 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 walk and our faith our faith walk just think about you know how many distractions there are in this world and yet the one who created our soul is not getting is being deprived and starved of our love and attention it's like you would never neglect your child and anyone who does neglect children, of course, we look down on that and we think, you know, who wouldn't feed their kids or who wouldn't, you know, attend, tend to their children's needs. You know, that's just dark and evil and wrong. But look at us neglecting our God, neglecting our, the one who created us, neglecting the one who created our souls, our very own souls. We don't give him the time of day, you know, and sometimes days are better than others, but, and I should speak for myself, <laughs> but I mean, really, when we think about it, in how much worship and praise should we be in? How, how much of the time should we be worshiping and praising our Lord? I was chopping an onion the other day and I was chopping away and I started singing in, in the spirit language, which, oh, the most beautiful melodies. I should tape it one day. I, I don't know if it would get in the way, but beautiful melodies just come flying out of my heart when I pray in the spirit. And um, I was thinking, 
why don't I do this more often? Because I was feeling fed and I was feeling so at peace and I was feeling so connected and I was feeling so happy and that this is what I was made to do. And, um, and yet I starve myself. It's like I've got anorexia of the soul or something, you know? It's, um, it's really sad. It's really sad. Jesus Christ deserves all of our praise and worship. Look, think about what he did for us, you guys. Think about it. And yet, you know, because he's perfect, you know, he doesn't need our love and affection. But it brings him so much joy. And it brings him so much glory when his creators are like, I love you. And I love you is my favorite worship. I just say, Jesus, I love you so much. I love you. And it just fills me. It just fills me up when I tell him I love him. So um, I think I'm going to wrap it up. I just wanted to touch base with you guys. I'm going to get that Beckett video up. I'm going to get that uh, Stephen Baldwin video up. I'm having some issues with my Dropbox, which is driving me crazy because the interviews went on a little too long and I've got to edit them. So that's another thing I wanted to tell you that those two videos will be slightly edited, which I don't normally do. But um, they're very long. So <laughs> I, I can't post them as is, but um, they should be up by Thursday and I'll try and do another check-in um, before then. Um, and I would just like to pray with you guys if that's okay. I'm just going to take a moment to um, just praise and worship our Lord. Father, I thank you for creating our souls, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for being, you know, such a genius and that you created the masterpiece of the human soul. There are no words to describe um, even animal souls, you know, Lord, like your creatures, you created us, Lord. And it is beyond our understanding. It is beyond any level of love that we could ever comprehend that you would give us life and that you would allow us to experience this world and that you made us in your image, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that you've given us a conscience, a conscious, conscious, I can never say that word, conscious. <laughs> thank you that you've done that, Lord, because we know when we're running away from you. We know when we're not you know, living up to our personal best um, in terms of communicating with you and nurturing our relationship with you. Thank you for giving us that little um, alarm system in our brain. And that's also the Holy Spirit. Help us to um, just be in complete awe of who you are. We come to you with all humility and love and um, submit to you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that you um, teach us to uh, remember that we need to come, with you, come to you with um, reverence and with um, lamenting. That's a new word, Lord. <laughs> coming to you with all of our issues, all of our sorrows, all of our grief. You know, show us, Lord, why we're here. Show us why you created us. Show us how to go out into the world and be the people that you created us to be, Lord. Holy Spirit-filled worshipers, rejoicers, people who um, reach out to others to help them, Lord, to help bring them to you, Lord. Help us to do that with uh, a gentleness and to always have a reason for our faith, Lord, like your word says, to always have a response, to always be able to say, this is why I believe that Jesus is God. This is why I believe 
that we have a creator that rose from the dead and died for us and died for our sin. Father, I thank you for deepening our faith. I thank you for teaching me that faith is um, a gift of the spirit, which I did not know, Lord. I thank you that this is a continual journey and that we will go easy on ourselves, Lord, because we know that you're going to discipline us in your most beautiful way, always guiding us, always teaching us. Lord, keep us on course, Father God. Don't let us backslide. These are such evil, scary times. And it would be so easy to just give up. It would be so easy to just say, I can't take this anymore. And you know, how can there be a God with just all the, with, with, with what's going on in the world? It would be so easy to deny you. It would be so easy to say, you know, this is, this is all just one big mess and one big mistake. But Lord, we know that that is so far from the truth. And so many of us in the darkness of the night, so many of us in this dark night of the soul are asking ourselves the big questions and deepening our faith in you and, and getting to different levels and deeper levels of sanctification and, and truth within ourselves you know, coming, going to places in our hearts and minds that we were unwilling to visit before this pandemic. And Lord, pride is the greatest pandemic on the planet. We just ask you to crush our pride and lean on you only, solely on you, Lord, that we wouldn't, you know, lean on anybody or anything else for our strength, Father, but that we would just call upon you and serve you and read your word. Help us, Father, to feed on your word. Help us to do that. Whether it's audio Bible or reading the Bible, help us, Father God, to have your word just floating through the house all day long, saying it out loud, speaking your word. Give us obedience to that, Lord, to that, because if we're just, we don't forget to eat, Lord. We don't forget to eat. We usually eat three meals a day, Father. So why would we forget to, to love you and worship you and read your word? Forgive us, Father. Forgive me. I love you. We love you. We thank you for being who you are, which is majestic, supernatural, you know, omnipotent, omnipresent, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Abba, 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 Abba. You are our Father. You are our Creator. You are the Creator of creation. And we bow to you. And we bow to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, guys. Ciao for now. Love you.